So you've got big folding phones and small folding phones, and most of them have a screen on the outside and a screen on the inside. But there's more than one way to fold an expensive sheet of tiny LEDs. The alternative way to make a phone fold is to have just one screen and fold it all the way around the back when it's not fully deployed. This is the Huawei Mate XS2. It's actually the third foldable of this kind that the Chinese company has produced, but Huawei is still the only brand making this kind of external folding screen. And after using this thing for about a month, I have to say I like this form factor a lot, perhaps a little more than traditional inward folding slabs like the Fold 4. Of course, that creative and unusual form factor is just part of the story here, especially with this being a Huawei phone in particular. So in our XDA review, we're going to take a deeper dive into what it's like to wield the Mate XS2 day to day and how the software situation has panned out three years on from the split from Google. I'm Alex Doby, this is XDA TV. Take a sec to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll jump into our full review of the Huawei Mate XS2. For a lot of us, the big appeal of a foldable is having extra screen space when it's opened out. Usually that comes with the compromise that it's pretty chunky when it's closed up. But the Mate XS2 in its folded form feels a lot more like just a regular big smartphone. Although the shape is different, the overall heft is basically on par with something like the Galaxy S22 Ultra here. The screen itself is staggeringly thin when it's unfolded, which is why you really need this grip area over on the right hand side to actually keep hold of the phone. This is where the camera and a bunch of the other internals live, along with the charging port down below. It's quite a natural fit if you're right-handed. If you're a southpaw though, you can hold it the other way around, but the button placement is a bit awkward if you do this, plus the front camera cutout ends up in a little bit of a weird place too. The construction here is a mix of aluminium and polycarbonate, particularly around the back where this textured effect of the plastic helps out with grip. The whole package feels very well made and solid. Obviously it's a foldable and therefore it will be more fragile than a regular handset, but the build quality is top notch, particularly in a hinge which feels nice and firm and can maintain this half open position if you want to prop it up when taking photos or on a video call. One thing I appreciate having used some other foldables is how the screen folds entirely flush. There's no gap around the back here when the phone is closed up like there is in the Z Fold 4. And while you'll definitely be able to see a crease in the screen here if you go looking for it, this is also way less noticeable than it is in Samsung's foldables. The other side of that coin is you've got this delicate, potentially scratchable screen on the back of your phone most of the time. I haven't picked up any abrasions just yet, but with long-term use, if you're picking this thing up and putting it down on various surfaces with a screen on the back, it seems pretty much inevitable that some scratches are going to accumulate over time. And there are some more durability questions around this curved edge area here. Obviously, if you drop it on this edge, it's probably not going to end well. I haven't exactly babied this phone during my time with it, but like I said, with all foldables and especially this kind of foldable, you just have to be aware that it's more fragile and factor that into how you use it. So no surprise from Huawei really, that they've nailed the build quality with this foldable. This unique form factor does mean you have to live with a few compromises though. There's no IP rating for water or dust resistance, unlike Samsung's foldables, and no wireless charging either. Not too surprising there, because I mean, where would you even put it? There is at least a 66 watt rapid charger provided in the box though, which can quickly get the 4600 mAh battery out of the danger zone. That's a good thing to have because in my time with the phone, its battery life hasn't exactly been spectacular. With my use mainly using it unfolded on Wi-Fi and LTE, I was looking at about four and a half hours of screen on time over a day's use. Obviously your mileage may vary depending on how often you're using it opened out, but still that's towards the lower end of what I would be getting out of a regular flat Android phone. But then this is a Huawei phone, so there are a couple of more hardware compromises to talk about that are unique to that company's situation. The Mate XS2 runs last year's Qualcomm Snapdragon 888, which is fine, that platform is still more than powerful enough for most things you're going to be doing on a phone, but it's the 4G version of that chip, and as much as 5G isn't really the huge quality of life upgrade that it was made out to be, the lack of 5G in a device this expensive really is a mark against the Mate XS2. This is an £1800 phone after all. The software situation is also kind of interesting too, to put it mildly. Obviously, Google services aren't loaded on this phone. Everyone knows that when you're talking about a Huawei device these days. And that still causes friction with many of the devices and apps that I use day to day. Notifications in Slack and Twitter, for example, don't work because these apps haven't implemented Huawei's HMS. Though, let's be honest, missing Slack and Twitter alerts might actually be more of a feature than a bug, depending on your perspective. So there are still app-related gaps, but unlike in 2019, I found it's possible to get by with the apps in App Gallery and third-party app stores that are linked in Huawei's Petal Search. Gmail and Google Calendar work great in Microsoft Outlook. Netflix and YouTube work as well for on-device playback, though without Google Cast support. And even things like Google Chrome and Translate and Maps work just fine, though without account sync. 
In other instances like Uber, you need to rely on the instant app feature that Huawei's built, which basically is a wrapper for the service's web app. So a lot of Android apps will work just fine, and for the apps that don't, it's usually not a case of them just not working, but rather that they do kind of work, but with some limitations. How well this software experience is going to work for you will depend on how much of the Google ecosystem you're bought into, as well as the third-party apps that you use. But even for me personally, as someone who uses a lot of Google stuff, I was surprised to see how much progress has been made. The other big thing to talk about around software is how well Huawei's EMUI 12 handles multitasking on that unfolded display, especially since this is technically based on Android 11. For the most part, multiple app support is handled pretty well. You're limited to two full screen apps at a time versus three on Samsung's foldables, but that's not a huge deal for me, especially since you can open out a whole bunch of windowed apps if you want. However, I did kind of miss the option to split the display into a one thirds and two thirds configuration. On the Huawei side, you can only have a 50 50 split in full screen apps, and MUI doesn't really have the ability to save app pairs the way some competitors do. Otherwise, multitasking feels pretty natural on this big expansive display. There's no Android 12 L style taskbar here, instead multi window is handled mainly by a gesture from the app switcher. Drag your app to the top left to split the screen or top right to open it in a floating window. And anytime you can also conjure up this shortcut bar which also lets you swap out apps in other sections of the screen. And despite having just 8 gigs of RAM in the version that I've been using, the Mate XS2 handled all the multitasking I threw at it without any slowdown. That perceived speed of course is helped along by an excellent and very smooth 120Hz display that can also ramp up pretty bright in direct sunlight. And despite the limited space for speakers, the stereo setup that Huawei has included sounded loud and clear. As for cameras, foldables don't always get the best imaging setup available, and that's also true of the Mate XS2, but that said, the triple camera configuration here is a respectable setup. It's led by a 50 megapixel RYYB sensor with two yellow pixels instead of a single green pixel to capture more light. And although there's no optical stabilization, it holds its own really well, even in darker conditions. Dynamic range is excellent, and I found portrait mode worked really well even in challenging and backlit conditions. Elsewhere, there's a 13 megapixel ultra wide that's fine in good lighting, but deteriorates pretty quickly in low light. And there's an 8 megapixel 3x telephoto with optical stabilization as well, which is not the fanciest zoom camera out there on paper, but in day to day use, I was really pleased with the extra versatility that this provided. Of course, this being a foldable, you also get to use all three of those cameras for selfies if you want, thanks to the unique form factor, instead of using that in screen 10 megapixel cutout camera. And as is the case with a lot of other foldables, when you're using either the main or ultra wide to take selfies, it's just not a fair contest versus a front facing camera in a regular phone. The bigger sensor with OIS and autofocus just gives you a much higher quality of image across the board. So the TLDR with the Huawei Mate XS2. I love this form factor, and Huawei's done a lot to refine the way this kind of phone feels, making for a foldable that's very usable in either layout. Especially in its folded mode, this feels like way less of a compromise than most large folding phones, and the build quality is second to none. I would say Huawei is slightly behind where Samsung is in terms of multitasking features, mainly thanks to what the Fold 4 inherits from Android 12 L, but the split screen 2 app mode works great regardless, which is mostly how you're going to be using multitasking on this kind of foldable. And the Google Apps situation is still a situation, but I've been surprised by how there's much less friction using a Huawei phone day to day, though some pain points are still there depending on which apps you use, and especially any apps you may need to use for work. I'm not sure I could use something like this as my main phone, but I've really enjoyed using the Mate XS2 as a secondary device over the past few weeks, a foldable tablet that also works pretty well as a phone. But the high price and the lack of 5G means that for the moment this kind of foldable is still going to appeal mainly to enthusiasts with a lot of disposable cash. Let us know what you think of the Huawei Mate XS2 down in the comments and whether you want to see more of this kind of foldable. I think devices like this just show how quickly things are developing in the foldable space and how there's more to foldables than just the Samsung offerings as good as those are. Finally, be sure to subscribe to XDA TV if you want to see more weird and wonderful foldables like this. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.